David Jordan, thanks for joining us on the Illinois Channel. And you are coming to us today from Washington, D.C. And we wanted to be talking to you about an issue that, with all the other news going on lately, the people may not have picked up on. And that is that the government, the federal government, could be facing a shutdown at the end of the month. Can you give us a background on what's happening and why? So Congress is currently on recess, but when they get back in session, they'll have a week to fund the federal government. The budget currently only goes through April 28th, and if they don't pass anything by then, then on April 29th, the government will not open up. Uh, roughly 850,000 employees would be furloughed, and people in essential positions like air traffic controllers or FBI agents would have to show up to work not knowing when their next paycheck may come. So the federal government, their fiscal year starts on October 1st and runs through the end of September. Uh, but I am correct, I believe, in that the, the government is not operating on a full-year budget right now, and that's really the, the reason why. So uh, what we're facing a continuing resolution, or we're, we're operating, I guess, right now on a continuing resolution. Is that correct? Yes. So instead of passing a complete budget, they are using a continuing resolution, which uh, makes it so that they're operating on the previous year's budget and the agencies are not able to readjust their spending. It's not very popular with the agencies. The Joint Chiefs of Staff referred to having to operate on a continuing resolution as professional malpractice. So what is the holdup as far as just uh, the Republicans are in control of both houses of Congress and the White House? Why, why don't they just uh, pass another continuing resolution to keep the government funded through the end of September? So the big sticking point is uh, the Office of Management and Budget Director Mick Mulvaney suggested that congressional representatives um, in, the, um, in the Republican caucus should add language to the continuing resolution that would defund sanctuary cities. It's not very popular with the Democrats, and they do need Democratic votes for sure in the Senate, where it could potentially face a filibuster, and probably in the House to get a continuing resolution both through both chambers and onto President Trump's desk. Now, we, we recently famously heard this whole issue about the filibuster and, and when uh, Justice Neil Gorsuch was approved, uh, the Republicans got rid of the filibuster for the Supreme Court nominees. Uh, what is the situation on the filibuster on something like this? Is it still applicable? So it would the filibuster would be applicable. They did not get rid of the filibuster entirely. It only applied to court appointees like Neil Gorsuch. So in effect, they need 60 votes instead of the 51 to get it through the Senate. And in the past, the Republicans have often been blamed for, uh, under President Clinton and under President Obama, uh, often the Republicans have faced uh, the blame for shutting down the government, I would expect that this time it's almost surely going to fall on the Republicans since they control both houses of Congress. On the other hand, the Democrats, uh, as you say, are objecting to the sanctuary city provision. Um, have you talked to anyone as far as how politically this would play out? So Minority Whip Dick Durbin has suggested that the Republicans would again face a lot of the scrutiny if the government does shut down. It, during the last government shutdown in 2013, Republicans approval of Republicans fell dramatically after the shutdown. Although sanctuary, the policy of sanctuary cities is not particularly popular, it pulled about 80 percent of Americans disapprove of sanctuary cities, even if the policies are pretty popular in the cities themselves, like Chicago. And on the other hand, we, we do have the example that uh, federal, uh, federal law is preeminent over state and local law. Uh, and has there been any discussion or have you talked to anyone as far as how the law, uh, you know, the legal standing of these cities who want to be violating the federal provisions on immigration? So it is a point of contention. It hasn't um, been I don't know too much about how it's been challenged myself, but the largely democratic cities that are not sharing their immigration statistics with the federal government have been doing it for quite a few years. The Obama administration did not really 
choose to challenge them on that fact, but it was a big campaign promise of President Trump's to be tougher on immigration than his predecessor. And then the other thing, I mean, as we uh, speak, there's a couple of weeks left in the month, but right now uh, the Congress is out of session. They're on their Easter break, so there's not really as many legislative days as we might think uh, before they face a shutdown. Uh, when actually would the government shut down? You say, is it right at the end of the month? So it's, the government is funded through April 28th. So the shutdown would begin essentially at midnight on the 29th if they do not pass anything in a, the week of legislative days they have. And we know in the past some of these uh, government shutdowns uh, sometimes last, they can last a couple of days, they could last longer. Uh, the government was shut down several times back in the 1990s when Bill Clinton was the president uh, and the Republicans had the House. Uh, so I guess there's really no way that we can tell, but what people might want to know, of course, at federal parks and those kind of things, sometimes they're shut down, which is probably more of an inconvenience to people on their vacations trying to see Washington or some of the federal parks and many times a real practical uh, application. Uh, the other thing I would say to people that there's, not to be confused, another issue coming up that could also force, I guess, the government shutdown is the, um, uh, we're running up against the uh, debt ceiling limit, but just to make clear, that's a different issue entirely, right? Yeah, so they're not explicitly connected. Um, in, I believe in the past, they're, they have tried to group it with um, the more fiscal conservative side of the Republican Party, but they are two different issues, not, not grouped together. Well, David Jordan, we, uh, we appreciate you taking the time to give us the background on this. Uh, with all the big news breaking uh, uh, of recent days, I think it's one of the issues that's very significant, but has really maybe not gotten the play that it should have. And we thank you for joining us and filling us in. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Take care.